Today's episode is brought to you by Cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, Cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, Cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to Cars.com. It's magical. Hello, my friends. This is Kirk Henderson and Josh Bow coming to you with uh, Mavs Moneyball After Dark. We're coming to you just moments after the Dallas Mavericks defeated the New Orleans Pelicans 125 to 107. Josh, how are you? I'm doing good. And how are you doing, birthday boy? Thank you. Thank you. I am yeah, the ripe old age 37. Hell yeah. I'm, I'm going to look up Dirk stats in the middle of this podcast and, and when he was 37 and, 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 <laughs> and see if I can, you know, duplicate those stats. Um, you know, it was a nice win. Uh, just to, to kind of recap what happened. The first quarter was a little dicey. Uh, Josh Richardson was, um, he came in with the reserves, I think is what we'll say. I don't really think it's fair to say that he was benched. Tim Hardaway is just playing so outstanding. It's kind of hard to keep him on the bench. Um, and the Mavericks had sort of a slow first quarter. And then in the second quarter, Luca um, decided to play basketball and was outstanding from three. And the game was over by halftime. Uh, the Mavs scored 77 points in the first half. And then uh, the, the Mavs really kept playing their starters for a while. They, they just continually outscored the uh, – they only scored 14 points in the fourth quarter, and they won by 18. So it was just, it was one of those games where, you know, the, the, I mean, they were an astounding, eh, I guess they were only 15 of 45 from three. Um, but they, they just really beat the crap out of the Pelicans and, and the Pelicans were missing uh, four of their five starters. So yeah, it's kind of the way it goes. Yeah. Well, a bad team missing most of their good players, uh, which you could say the Pelicans were, uh, they, so the Mavs did what they were supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Um, first quarter wasn't the best you know giving up 30 points to this pelicans lineup is not great uh but then like you said they scored 45 po- maverick scored 45 points in the second quarter lucas scored 17 i believe 17 of his 33 uh finally kind of woke up because i think he did not look great in the first quarter mm-hmm. um just could not seemingly get going and it kind of felt like a continuation a little bit of that memphis game but it was great to see him kind of explode three started falling and he was seven of 15 uh from three i can't remember the last time he took 15 threes <laughs> well, it's been a while he took some bad ones yes, in the late did. third and then the fourth and and i think you need to unleash your your, your thought that was, <laughs> that was in our slack which i'm just astounded it's it's my favorite take uh, in a meaningless not meaningless but game that was over in a while just love it go go for it uh, well <laughs> Based, I think the Mavericks had a 30 point lead entering the fourth quarter, and Luca mm-hmm. played the first half of the fourth quarter. I mean, he was in the game <laughs> with like 650 left in the fourth quarter on the second end of a back to back. I'm just sitting there like, why? And then I kind of was thinking about it. I was like, you know what? Because this would be like a totally Rick thing to do. My take is that Rick was punishing Luca for his efforts last night against Memphis. And I guess you could say his efforts um, Monday, late Monday night, early Tuesday morning in Memphis. <laughs> and there's part of me that thinks that uh, this was like the NBA equivalent of a public, sh- like a public sprints, like making someone do sprints at the end of practice when you're in trouble on the basketball team. We just got to see it uh, in person and it just kind of felt like, you know what, you want to go out, you want to party and then play like butt uh, Tuesday night uh you can you can run a little bit more in the fourth quarter and you don't yeah. get, you don't get a break uh as so, much of a break and that's my take it's worth noting that josh is referencing an unconfirmed but <laughs> probably accurate assessment of a team dinner in memphis that went late into the evening and, and for anyone believe- that watched the memphis game <laughs> Luca looked like he had been on a barbecue across Tennessee tour. <laughs> I mean, I'm not even like I'm. I'm mainly serious about like the food thing. Like he looked like he had eaten at Five Guys and then tried to play <laughs> in the, in a game. Like it and, wasn't like a hungover thing. It was like a 
like man this this dude is is playing with molasses and it was bad it, it, so so i i really love this take it will be unverified and and just to be completely clear we are going off of pure supposition based off of some things that you know memphis people talk to <laughs> i got some notes and um i have no reason to disbelieve it and then, hey, thing. ESPN's Tim McMahon conveniently pointed out that the Memphis bars do not close until 4 a.m. local time as well. Right, so, so it's it's just enough for us to make a good joke out of this because, yes. uh, you know, we're so used to COVID restrictions. And mm-hmm. since these guys are all vaccinated, it makes total sense that they probably want to hang out. Oh, yeah. And this is, to be clear, this is like, like pre-pandemic, pre-pandemic, this happens almost every night i mean oh god yes like, yeah yeah like they, they these, these guys, guys are social yeah. it, it was just that that memphis game luca looked like but and they're yeah. you know he came out and really looked good tonight and kind of rick played him through it and that was really funny and and man <laughs> i'm just i'm glad they won <laughs> yes um and it's funny i know people get really mad about like oh they went out i mean yeah it sucks that they went out and or we think that they went out and they play like butt, but I think it was Zach Lowe who talked about it. Like, I remember I heard this on one of his podcasts years ago and he was like, think of it this way. Like an NBA player's work day, like on a game day is like basically from like five to like 11 or whatever. Right. And he's like, think about when you go to happy hour as a normal person, you go to happy hour, like an hour, two or three hours from the time your work ends sure. at five. So think of it like, you know, an NBA player going out from midnight to to 2 or 3 a.m. is like the equivalent of us going out from like 5 p.m. to to 8 p.m. or whatever, you know, and getting a drink. So that that stuff never really bothers me. But it is funny. And it's like the only thing I could think of why Luca was still on the floor. Because why why else would he be playing in a 25 plus point game second out of back to back? But uh, that was funny. I'm glad they won. I am Um, too. I think there's it's kind of funny. this is a really nondescript game from the sense of like, obviously the Mavericks needed it because they still have not clinched being out of the play in yet, but they are very, 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 very close. One more win or a Lakers loss this evening. Uh, if that happens against Houston, they're in the second quarter. LA is up by four or five, but we won't know by the time this podcast is done, you'll know. Um, so it's really close, but it, so for a game, but otherwise, you know, the Pelicans were playing like almost not an NBA roster. And it was kind of hard. Like, what are we going to take away from it? Well, Kristaps came back and it was twofold. Kristaps came back and then I was like, what's the starting lineup going to be? Mm-hmm. And it was a different lineup than I anticipated. Uh, you want to get into that? Cause I think that's the main thing to talk about this game. Like Kristaps came back. We can talk about how he looked. And then I knew that there was going to be a possibility of Richardson hitting the bench, but I did not expect necessarily this exact lineup. Uh, yeah. One, well, talk three. about I, I want you to explain why you I don't I'm not sure I entirely understand what you mean about the lineup stuff. So, oh, let's go just, ahead with uh, that and then we'll yeah. pivot into kind of KP directly. I'm not surprised that uh Kristaps started and Richardson went to the bench for for Tim Hardaway Jr. What I'm surprised is that Maxi didn't start and Dwight Powell started because it's usually been if Rick has plays two bigs this season, it's been Maxi KP. Uh so I was mm. su- surprised about that. Uh, but I guess I shouldn't be because I think Max, I think he swapped out Maxi for Dwight before Kristaps had the knee soreness and the ankle sprain. So I guess I shouldn't have been too surprised. But also, uh, the 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 center and then Dia, Dorian Finney Smith at the four, that lineup was killing it while uh, KP and Maxi were both out. Uh, it helps that the Mavericks didn't play any beefy teams. You know, they played Miami, Brooklyn, Cleveland twice. Uh, not teams that start a four that gives you trouble um necessary or at least trouble on the inside like a physical presence like dorian can match up with kevin durant at least physically uh, at the four which is i think what brooklyn rolled out uh, on thursday uh, on may 6 when the Mavs beat brooklyn so i was wondering if maybe you know this new orleans team only played one big at a time and they played basically you know a, a, a normal forward at the at the four spot with james johnson former maverick and i thought well maybe he'll do you know, Dorian at the four and keep Richardson in the lineup and also start Tim Hardaway Jr. and then just play one big with Kristaps. But he went with the two big lineup and he went with Powell instead of Maxi. So I just, I don't know, I thought that was interesting. This is a lineup we haven't seen consistently since last season, I think, because this was like before Powell got hurt, this was like the lineup uh, last season, if I, if I remember correctly. So the, the starting lineup. 
Right. So I don't know. It was interesting. What do you? What, what are you? I got thoughts too. I mean, but I'll, I'll kick it to you first. Well, as far as Richardson goes, yeah. I think he's been inconsistent enough to where he needs to be flexible. Um, yes, yes, I, yes. I hope for the best for him because when he's feeling right and he's active on defense, he's very impactful. Yeah, he does but, stuff no one else on the roster can mm-hmm, do. Because he's got good hands and he has good instincts, but I think the conservative elements of the defensive scheme can really limit him. Um, the KP stuff is interesting to me because I think thought he looked good offensively i am an asshole about the fact (laughs) that he let me see here also i love that he came back on your birthday that's yeah that's that's great that's and i should know together no one noticed this i mean well no me i'm no one because i didn't tell anyone it was my birthday until today uh but I, i just didn't make the connection until later but I'm really glad that other players like Nicola Melli ended with a, a plus minus and the negative because Porzingis hanging out with a negative one while the Mavs are up 30 was fucking hilarious. <laughs> it was hilarious because he is so valuable as a piece, but not as, as part of the forefront and nothing else. You know, single game plus minus is garbage, but he got absolutely owned by Willie Hernan Gomez. He was scored on at the rim repeatedly. He is not moving well on defense, and I want to give him time to get back into that. That's the part of, of the game that I will say he needs to establish rhythm. Nothing drives me more crazy when he has like a five for 15 game and people are like, well, he needs time to establish his rhythm. I'm sorry. He gets open shots. Like he missed two open elbow jumpers with no one near him. Like that's, he's better than that. And I believe that he'll be fine. Defense is where he just needs reps and teams are not afraid of him. And that should be something that causes, I want to say concern, but has to be kind of on the, the, the scouting report, because if he's going to be on the floor, teams can't shoot 62% at the rim, which they do. So, I, I, I'm a, I'm a bit of a mixed bag because, it, you know, it's not like Powell and Maxi who, you know, really, we're not even talking about Maxi. Maxi is, is completely useless unless he's hitting three pointers. Like, like there's just the elements of this team. If they come together at the right point in time, they're going to just murder everyone they come up against. And that's what makes this so funny is they're just such a, a house of cards to an extent. And yeah. I don't know how to feel about it. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Uh, KP, you know, this is about what I would expect from him coming back for the first time in, you know, about a week or whatever it's been with the knee soreness. Uh, 19 points on 14 shots. He was efficient, but not as efficient maybe as he would like. He looked Only really good early throws. and then he faded. Yeah, And he that's did. what I don't understand. Like, he's just got to find some consistency. Well, I think the thing that's hard for him to find consistency is that, as I've said, and I mean, I really, maybe I'll get to this before the playoffs start when we have some time. I need, I really need to write about this. Uh, the consistency thing, I think, comes from the fact that his offense is all jumper. I mean, he all he does is shoot jumpers for the most part. And if he gets dunks and layups and at the rim, that's almost all assisted shots off the pick and roll, off cutting, off Luca, and that's fine. But otherwise. It, he's taken jumpers and how many times have we seen him get the ball, you know, in the elbow area and drive. And you're like, Oh, is he, he he might have a step. And then he kind of stops and takes Mm -hmm. like a, like a 14 footer. And sometimes he makes them. I mean, he was seven or 14. He made a few tonight. They were beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And like, it's obviously part of his game and he's pretty good at it, but he just, you don't get to the free throw line doing that. Uh, unless you've got like a really assorted bag of tricks, like someone like Dirk did. And he, you right. know, he doesn't have that because I mean, he hasn't had an off season in like, <laughs> like three years. He did some pretty cool stuff though. Like yeah. early in the first quarter, he had a dive and seal and got mm-hmm. fouled and scored where it was like, this is it. This yeah. is it. And then he hit a pull up jumper and got fouled while going right. I feel that's very important to note. Because that man loves dancing, like the Carmelo Anthony in him is very frustrating. So it's just like they're. 
I just don't know how to talk about him. I make everyone mad when I talk about him. <laughs> you you kind of saw people... everything from him tonight. Yeah. Like the hot start, the fading, the bad defense, but then just the fact that, like, there are moments when he's on the floor that it's just – you could just feel that the, the game is different for the Maverick, like, in a good way. Like, he just changes things just by standing there, and it's mm-hmm. – it's absolutely crazy. Maybe that's why he drives some of us crazy because it's like, man, if you have this much of an impact just by being someone who's just kind of standing in around and hanging around the three point line, like just imagine that they can maybe get him going a little bit more consistently. But, uh, but for first game back, I guess it's hard to complain yep. too yep. much. I, that's, that's kind of where I am too. And I think we should, uh, it's great. Cause I'll host a locker room after this and people are going to be pissed. Cause like, I mentioned this to somebody else in a, in a different Slack channel today. The people who tend to join the Slack channels are like my kind of people. And I say that in the sense of like very like pragmatist bordering on bitchy. And <laughs> so they just, they're kind of, they're like, ah, Kirk, you know, person that can dunk on. K-. And so I'm, I end up being kind of like the guy's like, well, you know, KP was fine. Or, you know, like I'm like end up being like the more positive person in the chat, which is just not my MO. So it's it's pretty funny the way that sort of stuff goes, but you know I, I gotta say you had a tweet in the first quarter which I thought was hilarious, and it was fun fact you know all five of these starters were on the team in 2019. Yes, <laughs> they all watched Dirk's final game. Uh, yeah, I mean that's part of the that's part of the thing, right? That's part of the angstiness online. That's part of why people are a little grumbly. That's part of why people don't have as much patience because they've, I mean, if this is the starting lineup, they're going to roll out for the rest of the season in the playoffs. It's going to be absolutely wild that they're going to start a playoff game and they've basically made zero tangible improvements to their starting lineup uh, from the end of 2019. Cause uh, these are kind of the guys that were starting, you know, besides Kristaps, obviously, and Tim Hardaway got hurt uh at the end of 2019 season but yeah it's just i think that's why the i think that's why people get really upset and frustrated online because they've just kind of seen these guys a lot uh and it's Mm. and it's not like these guys you know it's not like dorian finney smith is a 23 year old 10th overall pick who you're like okay i want to see him you know you want to see them this group go together like they've if there's definitely elements of like have they tapped out their potential because a lot of these guys are in their late 20s um so yeah I, I understand why that's frustrating but i mean also thank god you know pal is rounding into form mm-hmm. um and that's that's crucial and if these hey if these are the best guys you know you got to roll with it and i've done a complete 180 on tim Hardaway jr so um holy holy god that guy is like i'm ready to say some wild things about him if he keeps it up he's he is quiet i, I don't even know if it's quiet anymore but he is just becoming like the second most indispensable player uh on this team it feels like um maybe i'm overreacting to a really good stretch of like 10 games but man uh he is everything they need right now in terms of a secondary score next to luca well and you mentioned dorian earlier and dorian Mm -hmm. had a had a, a bit of a bounce back game he only took and hit one three but but seth part now on the athletic today with a back and forth with our former editor tim cato wrote like they're kind of talking about various Mavs things and one of the things they talked about was Dorian's ability off the dribble in the last 20 games Dorian has done some stuff off the dribble Mm -hmm. and I mean like like he scored at the rim at least three times tonight off of like straight line drives that he could not have done you know three years ago so it's just I don't know I'm I'm just in this very weird place where depending on the matchup I'm either going to be extremely bullish about the Mavericks or just despondent <laughs> on the playoff stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, this season has been really hard to judge this team because of all the external circumstances that have kind of derailed the season. Um, and even during this good stretch, you know, Kristaps and Maxi missed a lot of games, and it's like, well, things are going to change when they get back. Like, so it's been hard to get a, a total read on the team and. Mm-hmm. They played a lot of garbage teams in the last three weeks. And that also, you know, it's good to get the wins and that says something, but at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's not necessarily going to tell you how good they're going to do in a playoff series against the Clippers or 
or the Nuggets. So it's just hard to get a read. And that's part of, I think that's another part of the angstiness. And I'm kind of with it right there with you. I just want to see, like, yeah. I've been ready for the playoffs since like the beginning of April. Uh, Cause I feel like I have just seen what I need to see out of this team. Uh, and I just want to know like, man, Dorian Finney Smith, look at his game log. Uh, look at his assist totals. The last 10, 15 games, like, Three assists, two, two assists, two assists, three assists, three assists, four assists. Like he's making the plays off the dribble that he has to make if teams are going to put their center on him and give him the Tony Allen treatment. Mm -hmm. Um, So, but we'll see because like doing the, you know, getting four assists or or three assists in a game against Cleveland uh, in a a 25 point game against Cleveland is not the same as a playoff game against the Clippers or the Nuggets. Yeah. So you want to be like, you know, good on him for for playing as well as he's playing because he can only do what he you know he can only do what he can do in the moment uh he can't change what the schedule is like or 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 anything like that but there's just that element of for me in the back of my mind like okay now you have to prove it you've had a really great regular season you got to cap it off with with a by carrying over you know at least 70 or 80 percent of this into the playoffs Uh, and then i think you could say that about almost every guy on the roster except for Luca cuz Luca brought it in the playoffs last year like Maxi has a big playoff series coming up after what happened uh in the playoffs last season you know Pal didn't get to play in the playoffs cuz of his injury you know Kristaps yep. only played like two and a half games like uh Hardaway Jr kind of had a really rough end to the, to to the playoffs last year like all these he's got you know Brunson didn't play in the playoffs either he was hurt too like and neither did Willie Cauley Stein <laughs> um like there's a lot, there's a lot that this team, there's a lot of like, hey, you got to show me now, like in the playoffs mm-hmm. that we just can't answer right now, and that can be frustrating. But in the meantime, pile up wins, get as much rest as you can, and and we'll see what happens. Well, we'll see where things go. Okay, so this has been Kirk Henderson and Josh Bow. We're gonna be watching these the like the, the damn trash can Utah Jazz are gonna lose to Portland. So Portland's gonna stay in fifth tonight. Jesus. The Lakers are playing the Rocker. The Lakers are playing the Rockets and probably gonna beat the Rockets. And this is just gonna go down to the final game. The Mavs play uh, again on Friday. Josh and I'll talk to you after that, I think. And then Sunday, uh, it says TBD, but I'm pretty sure the game against Minnesota is going to be like early afternoon, yeah. um, which could which could be kind of fun. Uh, my son's not seen many many Mavs games this year, so I may be able to trick him into watching one. Um, so we'll be talking about stuff. I will go. Is tomorrow's Thursday? Yeah, I will go live on Locker Room Friday during the day, uh, so we can talk about some of this stuff. Uh, but after this, uh, you know, you'll. You, Later on in the day, probably sometime Thursday afternoon, I'll post the the locker room, which I'm going to host after Josh and I are done. This has been fun, Josh. Uh, you got anything else? No, except uh, I'm really, I don't know why, but I'm really nervous uh, about Anthony Edwards on May 16th. Who should be? Minnesota They're playing a lot better. I know. Uh, I, feel, I feel really stupid, but that's. I just wanted yeah. to put that out into the universe just in case. No, well, you know, we're here. All right, guys, been Kirk Henderson and Josh Bowe, Mavs Moneyball After Dark. We will talk to you guys in a couple of days.